What's up guys? I am Exotic Gaming and today I am back with another Pixel Gun 3D video. Can you guys believe that it's already Christmas Eve? It sure doesn't feel like it where I live in Florida. As we speak right now it's 87 degrees and it feels more like September than actual late December but I have a very special video coming out for you guys, a more Christmas themed video tomorrow so you guys gotta stay tuned for that. But today's video is another weapon review. Yesterday I asked you guys on Instagram what weapon you would like to see me review next and a lot of people were commenting the portable death moon up2 and I decided that that is the weapon I'm going to be reviewing for you guys today the portable death moon up2 has to have one of the most ferocious sounding names out of every possible name you could give a weapon in pixel gun 3d I certainly would not want to encounter somebody in a dark alley who has a weapon named a portable death moon this weapon has the Star Wars theme and it looks really cool, especially when you go into actual live gameplay. But this weapon is very unique in that it only has a couple of other weapons similar to it, one of them being the Alligator UP2. The Alligator, if anybody actually owns it who's watching this, knows that it is a weapon that has a very slow firing rate, and that goes the same with the portable Death Moon UP2. The firing rate is set at 87, and that means you have to be very accurate when actually going up against enemy players. This is certainly not a a weapon to use if you don't really get the best accuracy in the world. If you are somebody who gets your best gameplay with either the laser minigun or the icicle minigun or the automatic peacemaker, this is definitely not a weapon for you. But if you are somebody who's pretty accurate, you can get a majority of your shots to actually hit the enemy players and you'll find that you'll get some pretty decent gameplay with this. Now that being said, and plus this weapon only has a 9 capacity, which means that you're going to have to get 5 out of your 9 possible shots to hit an adamant armor player if you really want to completely take them out, you should probably stay in close range matches with this weapon. If you go into the very long range ones, you'll find that it will be a lot more than 9 shots to take out even ruby armored players at times, because a lot of those shots will not actually hit the enemy player. This weapon does have an area damage, but it's not the biggest area damage in the world, and you can't count on that area damage every time you fire at an enemy player. But Nevertheless, it still performs pretty well, especially in maps like Coliseum, like I'm in right now. Coliseum is a great one, Silent School, Infected Prison, Pizzeria, all of those are very, very good maps for this weapon, and you can get some pretty good results as long as you can make a majority of your shots hit the enemy player. I mean, as you guys can see there, it was, I fired all nine of my shots, still was not able to take that guy out, obviously he had a mech, so, you know, you can't really take mechs out in all those nine shots, generally. You might be lucky at times and get people with the mechs, but I wouldn't count on it, um, so I'd say stay away from people who have the mechs, and there you go. With the 9 capacity, you are at a big disadvantage when you do reload, because these people who have weapons that have a much higher capacity than you, like, for example, that guy, the Solar Power Cannon, that one has a pretty good capacity, and you don't have to really reload too much, and when you have a weapon that doesn't really reload too much, uh, you're going to have a much better advantage over somebody with something like this, where you reload constantly. I think I reload more often with this one than most other weapons in Pixel Gun 3D. A lot more than pretty much 80% of the weapons that I, I generally use in Pixel Gun 3D. And um, you do have 27 shots when you do respawn, so that's not that bad. You generally don't run out of that because you usually die before that actually runs out. Um, and then, you know, if you do run out, you can always use other weapons like your prototype or your nutcracker or something like that just to, uh, you know, prevent running out of any ammo with the portable death moon. This is definitely not a weapon which you should use 100% of the time in a match. I would definitely recommend using this at certain times um, if you do have it. There are certain weapons in Pixel Gun 3D which you can use all of the match. You can use it from start to finish. For example, the Icicle Minigun is one of those where you can use it the entire length of the match and get great gameplay the entire entire match. That's not the case with the Portable Death Moon. There are times when you should probably take something other than the Portable Death Moon out to actually take out as many people as possible. But since for the sake of this video I'm going to be using this the entire length of the match and you guys you guys will find that at times in this video I would have been able to kill people with other weapons than this one and that's the problem when using this. But nevertheless it still is a pretty good weapon and you can get some pretty good gameplay with it. The good thing is is this weapon really does not have much of a bullet travel time so you don't have to really worry about that too much. Uh, if this thing had a bullet travel time, I'd say 100% don't get it at all, because if, it th if this thing had a bullet travel time and the slow firing rate that it did, it would just not be a very desirable weapon. 
Um, but since it doesn't, you know, this is a pretty good weapon. I would not say that it is a necessity, for sure. Um, if I was ranking the weapons in Pixel Gun 3D as pretty much, you gotta buy it if you wanna win, and uh, it's a cool thing to have, then this would be in the, it's a cool thing to have. I mean, it's not a necessity. There are certain weapons in Pixel Gun 3D which are necessities, and the prototype is one of those, the Icicle Minigun would probably be one of those, the Automatic Peacemaker, Crystal Laser Cannon, all of those weapons are must-haves, and this one is just, you know, it's cool. You don't, you don't need it, but it's, it's cool. I mean, it's not bad by any means, it's just uh, not a necess necessary weapon. And especially when you go eventually find an invisibility potion like I have right there, you will be able to take people out, plus a jetpack. Um, that was pretty much ultimate results right there, for sure. Invisibility potion plus jetpack, but that's, that's generally not going to always happen, but at times you can. As you guys can see right there, you can still use and get multi-kills with this weapon. Not all the time, that's for sure. You don't, you're not going to always get a multi-kill when using this, but it is a very, very good weapon, and this weapon probably should not be counted as the highest lethality weapon in the special section. As you guys can see, it is set as the max lethality for a special weapon. I personally would say this thing should be more down like 20 or something like that because I just feel like it's not as effective as something like the freeze ray rifle. I mean, it is good, but it's just like, if you compare this with the freeze ray rifle, I just have to say the freeze ray rifle is a step up compared to this one. Doesn't mean it's bad though, guys. I don't want you guys to start thinking that I'm saying it's bad because of that, because it cer certainly is a good weapon, and I've gotten some fantastic gameplay with it. Like, there's a mech kill right there. So you can kill mechs at times if you're lucky, but then again, once you do have to reload, that's a pretty long reload time, and you reload so frequently that when you encounter somebody with adamant armor, a lot of the times, you're gonna just end up dying a lot when you reload. Reloading times is one of the biggest complaints I have with this. Um, if it had a quicker reload, maybe in like a UP3 version, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Obviously, this is the max version of it. You're not going to have a UP3 version of this. But a faster reloading time would be the only thing that could possibly be any better for this weapon. It has a good lethal or damage. Because um, it's pretty powerful. Since this thing has a slower firing rate set at 87, each one of the shots that you do fire is pretty powerful. I mean, it's not too many shots to take people out. It's five to an adamant armored player. It's four to a ruby armored player. Three to a diamond, two to a gold, and so on and so forth. It's one from pretty much wooden and downward. So it's, it's not bad by any means, guys. And I would definitely not say to go into a match with this if every other enemy player has adamant armor. If you're in a match like I'm in, where there's people that have like half adamant armor and then some people have no, actually, I think one of those guys had no armor whatsoever, then that is pretty much your optimal match for you. Well, I would say probably for taking out turrets, this is one of the best weapons for it. I mean, as you guys can see, I already took the turret out. Almost. One more shot. There we go. I mean, as you guys can see, taking turrets out is very, very good with this weapon. So, if you're in a match where there's just so many people who are constantly using turrets, then hey, this might be something for you to do the uh, to take the people out in that aspect. But generally, in terms of gameplay wise, I'd say stay away from this if you are um, tight on coins. If you don't really have too much you can actually spend in this game, then you can do without it. It's not a necessity. Um, and if you are looking for a special weapon, which you should just definitely get, I'd say go for the freeze ray rifle. Freeze ray rifle is freaking amazing. Now, I don't really know how the UP1 and the UP0 versions of this weapon works, so I can't really tell you, but like I always say, if you do plan on getting this, you should probably just get the UP2 version and get it max upgraded just so you can get your best possible gameplay. For if you don't, then it will probably be more like an 8-shot kill with the UP1 version instead of a 5-shot to an adamant armored player, which is not the best for sure, and somebody who has adamant armor will generally have much more powerful weapons than you, like the storm hammer and the prototype and such, and when they have a one-shot kill weapon, and you have a eight-shot kill weapon, it's probably not going to really work out in your favor, so keep that in mind. Um, like I said, stay in matches where there's a wide variety of different armor levels, where there's people who have adamant and ruby and gold and wooden and all these different armor levels, so you can get your best possible game play with it. Gonna get another invisibility potion because it's definitely helpful using an invisibility potion with this thing because uh, you'll find the gameplay will get a lot better pretty quickly. Like this guy didn't really even know that I was there. Unfortunately, somebody else 
killed me, so I didn't have the chance to kill him, but, um, you know, you, you can usually kill people when you have invisibility potions. It actually works pretty well, although once you do eventually get the point at where the uh, people are, it's pretty easy to find them, again, once they are invisible. I don't know if that made sense or not, but it is, it is pretty easy to find people when you are invisible and using this weapon, so... There you go, guys. I don't like the little blast that it does to enemy players. Um, if it could like do like the plasma pistol, where it blasts people with an area damage, but it doesn't blast them away from you, that would be ideal. And with only a nine capacity and that problem, that's that's a deal breaker right there. Because the thing is, you have only nine shots in the weapon, and you want to be as accurate as possible. And when you blast people away from you, that will prove pretty difficult to use those nine bullets effectively. I can't really say bullets, I don't know what you would call these things, little pink explosion blast things, I don't really know, I just say, I'm gonna say pink blasts, because it looks pretty cool, not gonna lie, when you do fire and it hits a wall or an enemy player, it's this cool little pink blast that this thing has, and you know, it, it looks pretty cool, not gonna lie, it's definitely on the looks of sides, um, I don't know if really soft could have really even done a better job at replicating a death moon, because that's pretty difficult. If somebody just said in, uh, you know, in, in Facebook or something, was just like, I want you to make a death moon for Pixel Gun. Yeah, I, I, you know, you don't, you wouldn't know where to start. That's kind of difficult. But as you guys can see, I'm getting some pretty decent gameplay with this thing. It's not bad. Like I said, you can get up to first place at times, especially in close range matches. Coliseum might be somewhat a little too close range, just because everybody will have a pretty good advantage with the storm hammer and such but in maps like infected prison and silent school you're gold you're gonna get some really good gameplay with this thing and I mean it's it's good guys I really really like it so I don't honestly have much else I need to say other than the facts that I I said already get this for close range gameplay don't use it in long range gameplay since it doesn't have a scope it's not really gonna work out too well um, you're gonna want to be as accurate as possible when using this thing if you are somebody who's not very accurate I would say stay away from this because you're just not going to get the best gameplay in the world if you are not an accurate pixel gun 3D player. You can at times be very lucky, especially if people really aren't moving around too much, but as you guys can see, like in the match that I'm in right now, people are moving around a lot and it gets really difficult to try to fire at enemy players when they are moving around as much as these people are. So there you go guys, 28 kills, I got second place in this Colosseum match, Colosseum is definitely a good map for this weapon. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So, I really hope you guys did enjoy this review on the portable Death Moon UP2. One of the most ferocious sounding names, but not the most ferocious, ferocious, I was about to say ferocious, ferocious weapons out there in Pixel Gun 3D. It's good, but it's uh, not, not like a deal breaker, so... Yeah, I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, then be sure to hit that like button, comment, favorite, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Pixel Gun 3D videos. Be sure to check out my other reviews I have done on other weapons in this game. Um, I'm thinking about the next review to be the laser crossbow. I don't know. What do you guys think? You think you want the laser crossbow or not? Um, I definitely recommend following my Twitter, my Instagram, and my Facebook, especially uh, my Twitter and my Instagram because those are the ones I use more often. Um, I've kind of neglected my Facebook, but I'll try to use that, but um, especially my Twitter and my Instagram to get updates on what is being uploaded right before, so you guys can be the first commenters if you want, and uh, you can actually have some input on what you would like for the next review, because I got, I believe, 12 requests on the laser crossbow, 11 or 12 requests, and I got 18 requests on the portable death moon. So obviously if 18 people want it versus 11, then obviously I'm gonna choose the portable death moon. So we'll see. If I get more requests on a different weapon than the laser crossbow next time, then uh, you know, I'll do that one other than the laser crossbow. But I'll do all of them eventually. You guys don't really have to worry about that. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other reviews I have done on different, um, what, or not different, what my other uh, videos on Pixel Gun. Sorry, sorry, the commentary is pretty bad. I almost died in lifting today. Woo! Ah, ran out of blood sugar. Blood? Blood? Blood sugar! I didn't eat anything for breakfast and I tried to like squat 350 pounds and it didn't really work out too well. I almost collapsed on the floor. That was pretty bad. So if you're ever lifting, guys, heavy weights, you gotta go eat breakfast before you do it. But, yeah, so um, let's go get one last kill, guys, and then I'll end the video here. Okay, one more, two more. I'll take two kills. I'll take a turret as well. <laughs> This might as well get everything, you know? Can I get a turret kill? If I get a turret kill, that would be insane. Or maybe just gonna go all out, get a multi-kill. You know, because why not just go for your best ever- You suck! What are you doing? Stop killing my turret! God dang it! 
Ah, these people. Alright, but yeah, I died, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.